Welcome back to the bonding notes where we will discuss uh, the bonding notes. Now, you cannot do these bonding notes until you've already done the other set of bonding notes that came out blue. You got one page of notes that needs to be done first. You should uh, have on the back side of your, or the bottom part of your notes right here, right? The purpose. So remember the purpose to doing bonding is we want to have a full outer shell. If you do not have a full outer shell, then you do not have a stable outer shell. So it needs to be full in order to be stable. And if it helps, you can think of atoms like little people. They like to be stable. So we want to make these atoms as stable as possible, and then they'll be much happier. All right. So now we're going to discuss types of bonds. To discuss the types of bonds, you will need your periodic table, as always, the periodic table. Today, we're going to talk about what happens with things from this side of the periodic table. Try to get with things from this side of the periodic table. Notice I didn't say this side of the periodic table because them's the noble gases and them's don't play no bonds no way. So the ionic bonds, these occur between atoms with very low and very high electronegativity. You don't have to write that down. You don't even have to remember the word electronegativity until you take chemistry. I just wanted you to sort of see it and get used to it. Basically, one of them is going to give up electrons, right? See the electronegativity? One of them is going to give up electrons really easily. The other one is going to take electrons very easily. I think of this one like the stealing bond. You've got someone, I don't know, walking down the street and they're pretty much just like, I don't know, like holding their wallet out just like, okay, got my wallet, easy to grab, and then someone else can just easily just grab it. They're real fast, they sprint off. Obviously the person who lost the wallet is going to chase after them, now they're bonded together. Again, this happens when you have atoms from over here, right? Atoms with one or two electrons in their outer shell, right? One or two, it's really easy to get rid of one or two rather than gain seven or gain six to fill your shell. They'll get together with elements over here that have six or seven valence electrons. It'd be a lot easier to gain one more electron than get rid of all seven to go to the next shell in. So the elements tend to be found, for your next blank by the way, on the opposite sides of the periodic table, on the opposite sides of the periodic table. Ionic bonds, when they form, are going to happen between two ions. So you'll notice here, we have sodium, we have chlorine. You'll notice in our outermost shell, we have one valence electron for sodium. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons for chlorine. So we'll take one electron over here, send it over here. Now we have two ions. That's the next blank of your notes, by the way. These bonds form between ions. We've got a plus one ion because we lost a negative electron, and there it is over there. See how it's blue? That's yeah, because it's from over here. Now it's over there on chlorine. What that's going to do, and now you got a plus one here, a negative one here, opposites attract. It's romantic. Ionic bond is a romantic bond. Yeah, this, this mugger here stole, stole the wallet, and then they chased, the chase ensued, and now they're romantically combined. Yay, ionic bond. Make sure that you label these bonds here. Here's what I want to see. When you show me this electron getting sent over there, makes a plus one charge here, minus one charge here. Make sure you label your charges on your notes. That's going to cause an electrostatic attraction. You can just write that it causes an attraction. P.S. this thing right here, we got sodium and chlorine together. That's NaCl, which is table salt. So you should probably label your notes with table salt. That's going to be my top secret evil check to make sure that you actually watched the video and didn't just look at the pictures and zone me out because you won't have this labeled as table salt. And then I'll hand it back and said, you didn't watch the video. You didn't label it table salt as table salt. Next page for the next type of bond. This next type of bond is the covalent bond. Co as in like co-captains, they're together, they're working together. They share the captaining responsibilities. And valent as in, uh, you guessed it, the valence electrons. This I like to think of it as the sharing bond. Just like as I said, the co-captains will be sharing the responsibilities on the field. This is the sharing bond. How fun, how enjoyable. This bond is commonly occurring between elements that both have partial shells. So, so far, 
we've got the first two bullet points taken care of. Covalent bonds are formed when ions share their outermost electrons. Covalent bonds form between elements with partial outer shells, halfway shells. Great example, CO2. This is a covalent molecule because it is formed from these two atoms, well, three atoms, these two elements combining. Keep in mind that we are talking about pretty much these guys interacting with pretty much these guys. Over here, you'll get some weird metallic bonds because those are metals. And again, noble gases don't play, no bonds, no way. In the single covalent bond, we're forming one covalent bond between molecules because we are sharing one pair of electrons. Just one electron gets shared in between them. How fun. In the double covalent bond, we're sharing two pairs of electrons. And in the triple covalent bond, yeah, I bet you guessed it, we are sharing three electrons. In the quadruple covalent bond, there is no quadruple covalent bond. That's not a thing, that's too many electrons. Doesn't happen, not for real reals. Let me show you some picturefull pictures before we fill in the last little bit of the blank here. Right here, showing one line between these two carbons, that is a single covalent bond. You'll notice we've got single covalent bond sharing one electron. Over here, between that carbon and that oxygen, you'll notice we have a double covalent bond. Oh, how fun, how fun. When you draw bonding, you draw them with these stick lines between them. See the carbon, connect to another carbon. Sometimes we'll also just draw this in a straight line for not feeling like showing any kind of geometry. So you got a bunch of carbons, right? Over here we got a carbon, and then we got a OH, and then we got a double O. How fun, how fun. Remember, double lines for double bonds, triple lines for triple bonds. The single bond is the weakest covalent bond. However, all covalent bonds being sharing bonds in an aqueous solution in water are stronger than an ionic bond. The double covalent bond is stronger than the single because we, we're sharing, we've got more enmeshment in those outer shells, all right? We're sharing more electrons. The triple bond, not pictured here, but here I'll draw it for us. Boop, womp, 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 boop. Three lines because we're sharing three pairs of electrons now. This is the strongest of the covalent bonds because we are sharing three pairs of electrons. So in the notes here, the more electrons shared between the two atoms, the stronger the bond becomes. To get the rest of the notes, you actually have to watch the next video. How exciting. Thanks for watching.